Okay, I believe I had a question come in about uh, putting this function here of y equals x squared plus 14x plus 11 into vertex form. So what I have off here to the side is just some basic knowledge that we'll have to use here. Where we have first off y is equivalent to the quantity of x minus h squared plus k. That is our vertex form and that's the vertex form of all quadratic equations. But when we look inside the vertex function, what we have here is we have a quantity squared. So let's take a look at what a quantity squared looks like. So if I have this a plus b squared, then that form, when I do the distributive property, okay, is going to create this idea of a squared plus two times the value of a times b plus b squared. And then the only difference between the a minus b, the quantity squared, is that this is a negative two, but everything else is the same. So, let's take a look at this equation up here of y equals x squared plus 14x plus 11. And essentially what we're going to do here is, is that we're going to ignore, ignore this 11 for a minute. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this part of the quadratic. And the quadratic part that I'm talking about here is this x squared minus 14x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something called complete the square. So what I'm going to do is take this information right here, and I'm going to complete this form over here. And now what I have here is that I have x squared plus 14x plus x. And essentially what I'm going to say to you is that this is the first two parts of this one of these. So if I come over here, what I'm going to look at is that, all right, x squared is essentially my a squared. And 14x is essentially my 2ab. Well, if a squared is x squared, then this a in here must be the x. So that implies that 14 must be this 2b. Now, what I need to find out is what this b squared is. So what I'm going to say again, okay, let's go ahead and show you this very quickly, is I'm saying that these first two terms I'm going to match to this one up here where it's the a plus b, the quantity squared, simply because I have a term squared plus... I'm adding, and up here what I want you to notice is I have a term squared and then I'm adding, so I'm going to have to complete this one here. The a we said up here is being substituted with an x, so therefore I have the x, so I have two, essentially this a would be an x, so I have a 2b, so therefore 14 must be twice what b is. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to say, all right, well, I need to figure out what the b squared is. Well, the easiest way to do that is just to write an equation that says, well, 14 must be whatever 2 times b is. Solving that little equality there, we get b is equal to 7 when I divide both sides by 2. And therefore, b squared must be equivalent to 49. So what I now have here is that now I've got this b squared term. But the problem with this is, is where do I go from here? Because I'm not allowed to change this function's value. I'm allowed to change the look of it. And essentially, I'm trying to change this look into being something like this. But I can't change the value of it. So how do I do that? How do I change the, the look of something without changing the value? And what comes into mind here is called the additive property of zero. So the additive property of zero is that if I take some quantity and I add zero to it, I will still get that original quantity. Now, what I'm now going to do here is I'm going to add in a quantity of zero, but my quantity of zero is going to be based off of this b squared. And my quantity of zero is going to be this idea of taking a positive 49 and plugging a negative 49 in as well. And 49 and minus 49 then make zero, so I won't be changing this quantity. So what I do here is I take a look at this group and I separate it off. And I'm going to separate this group out by itself. Okay. And I'm going to say into that group there, I'm going to add in a positive 49 and put a negative 49 in. So what I now have here is this idea of y being equivalent to, and in this quantity, I'm going to have this x squared plus this 14x, and I'm going to put plus 49 minus 49, so there's that group, and then I'm going to put this plus 11 out here. 
because I've essentially just separated it off. And it's okay that I separate it off, not a big deal. The important thing to remember is here is that I've got this added in. So what we do from now is we continue on. Now I gotta get this negative 49 out of a group. How do we get something out of a group? Well, we just apply the distributive property. What am I distributing? Well, out in front of these parentheses, there's nothing there. And whenever you have nothing in front of a parenthesis, it's always a number one hidden magically. So all I'm gonna do is distribute a one to this negative 49, and then this becomes y equals the quantity of x squared plus 14x plus 49. When I distribute it to the negative 49, it removes it from the parentheses. And one times 49 is negative 49, and I add 11. So I'm on my way, I've got a group, I just gotta make sure that this turns into a quantity squared. And then I just look for this k. Well this value right here, negative 49 plus 11 is gonna make this value of k. So let's go ahead and do that, where y equals, I've got this x squared plus 14x plus 49 is going to be e uh, minusing 38 now when I simplify these two terms. And essentially now what I have here is that this quantity, I created it by completing a square, so what I'm going to know is that this is going to factor into this form of a plus b, the quantity squared, where we know a is x and we know b is 7. So what I can now say to you is because it's addition, it must match this one, that what I'm left with here is that y is now equivalent to, well, this term was a, so it's x, okay? This is my b, so plus that b, which is gonna be seven. That quantity squared, I subtract 38. And lo and behold there, what I've got is vertex form, where my vertex is, the vertex form, this is where we need to be careful, okay? It says y equals the quantity of x minus h to quantity squared plus k. So what I now need to do here is I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit again. I'm gonna show you that this really is y is equivalent to the quantity of x minus, and in parentheses here, okay, I'm gonna write negative seven, that quantity squared minus 38. And that's okay that I have it like that. But what I wanna show you here is that the H is actually a negative seven because that's what's gonna make this simplify up to a positive seven up there. So the vertex for this particular function is going to be, the vertex is going to be negative seven, negative 38. And there's my vertex for this particular quadratic. So I hope that helps with whatever you're doing. If you're just trying to turn it into the vertex form, note that this step is not necessary. What we would have here for the vertex form would actually be this, quad, this uh, function right here. We would not write this one. You would be using this uh, function right here. So I hope that helps for whatever you're doing. But this particular one, again, this is the vertex form. I'm only showing this so that you understand that the vertex of this quadratic is at negative seven, negative 38. But this particular one is would be your answer. So I hope that helps with uh, whatever you were asking me.